Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dawn from UC Davis. Um, along with me today, my student is also uh, in the participant who's actually working with me on this particular project. So a little bit of the background information and the objectives of this new project that we started about a uh, nine months ago. Then we'll talk a little bit about the research methodologies we're following, the current research progress, and also the steps ongoing and the forward. So and part of the motivation of this project is oh, ever since 1960s that we have seen a, a large increase of the bridge life loads and also the truck volume uh, continuously in within the state and across the country. And some of those truck loads and the wheel configurations for those bridge design we had years ago no longer reflect the modern trucks. Uh, also, we have a lot of other uh, permit vehicles that added in different states. In California, we had the P15 um, permit load vehicle and also some of the mandated and allowed state programs like the special hauling vehicles and emergency vehicles that California is actually opening up also for those uh, to those new types of loadings. The existing design uh, or the bridges that we have, uh, we have uh, in the maintenance process have seen a lot of the loss of the performance and also the cracking and failure due to the high cycle fatigue issue itself is causing a lot of the deterioration of the bridge within their uh, service lives. So the current uh, ASHTO design that we are following within the current country is actually the ASHTO design based on three different categories, the approximate method and the refined method and also the empirical method. As you can tell that neither of these methods is providing the optimal solution to what we need in California, either the accuracy or we don't even allow the empirical method at all in California amendment. So the objectives of this project uh, was to develop an updated LRFD based bridge deck design procedure using the refined analysis method. Uh, at the same time, incorporating modern vehicle configurations that we talked about, and also the dynamic loading conditions, flexion shear demands into the refined analysis. Ideally, we would also like to incorporate the fatigue issue itself, but it's a, a little bit over the scope of the project, but we are doing part of the review on this subject. So the ultimate objectives on this project was basically for two different tiers of design. One is uh, uh, simply the design worksheets that actually reflect the updated design in the ASHTO appendix, but developed by the rigorous and the refined analysis method. And then the part of the, the second tier is to streamline the chart-based design procedure that would be suitable for daily design experience for production design. And so the current methodology we are actually following is uh, primary in the five different steps, starting with the refined final element modeling of the deck itself and moving into the parametric studies and come up with the capacity demand database for the design and also to assess the, uh, the qualitatively, quantitatively assess the approximate method that's currently used in the ASHTO appendix. And step four is to come up with a simplified design procedure. And at the end is to come up with some recommendations on the future deck design method itself. So to start with the refined analysis, we actually investigated a lot of different refined methods itself. Uh, of course, some of those existing, for example, 2D grillage analysis in the design code, they are simple, but they have some of the inherent inaccuracy for certain cases that we're actually looking at. And some of them are actually having issues with cases like discontinuity of the moment in the skewed bridge. So we are actually adopting the accurate fine element modeling in a 3D form to start with this procedure for the project here. The two types of bridges we're considering primarily are the casting place pre-stressed box girder bridges and the pre-cast pre-stressed eye girders, which are the two commonly used bridges in our California uh, region. We have a database currently consisting of 100 plus bridges we're actually looking at. And, and part of this analysis also at the very beginning is also to uh, adopt the prototype of bridges to look at the model verification and also come up with independent verifications using other model examples in other design manuals. For example, the FHWA report that we actually have a full access to. 
<clears throat> so one of the challenges we started, of course, is the loading on bridges. The people who are working on bridges are actually quite familiar. In addition to the truck loads, the HL93 loads, we're also incorporating the California permit load and then the special hauling vehicle and the emergency vehicle. These are the loading cases that was not included in the previous design, especially the last two ones we have. And so the wheel loads we have here, is, for example, the permit load had a lot of the patch loads we're modeling here. The dynamic loading itself is also complicated. We are actually cooperating with a different research project that actually started before us to actually have that as our input for the dynamic condition, considering also the two two-way flexion, the shear behavior, and then come up with a design procedure for estimating the deck loading of each different bridge types. And so the first prototype of bridges, we selected the, among the 100 plus bridges was this the casting place pre-stressed concrete box girder bridge. It is a, a, a relatively small size of the bridge. We actually have some of the bridges a little bit larger than this one, but this was actually very standard and typical bridges in our construction field. So it a, <clears throat> has a three spans with a total of about 170 um, feet and long, and then the middle span is the longest part, and it has four cells, a box girder, with a total width of about 42 and a half feet on this one here. The bridge has the uh, pre-stressing tendons involved in there. It, had, it has actually uh, quite a lot of the details in the bridge construction back then, so we were able to extract a lot of the information from this one. And so the modeling of this particular proto bridge took us some time to get into the program in the Athena software, started with the geom geometrical information with the pre-stressing tendons, and also the steel reinforcement, both in the longitudinal and the transverse direction. And we also had the mesh sensitivity study to come up with a, a reasonable size of the mesh that's computationally effective and also accurate in the, in the convergence rate. And so the First the trial of the refined model actually uh, gave us uh, some really good ideas on the behavior. One of the drawbacks we actually faced was the workload of this particular refiner modeling is uh, almost impractical with various design parameters, especially with bridges. We had to consider the span length, the configuration, the girder spacing, and a lot of the other material properties <clears throat> and stiffness of the bridge. So one of the suggestions we came up with with Caltrans team is actually to have a conservative envelope method to actually cover the refined model that, that actually still give us good reliability and the representative results of the real bridge. So we're actually looking at this rigid support model which I will talk about a little bit in the next slide. It also helps us to narrow it down with the effort in the modeling by focusing on the parameters related to the girder spacing, the tire pressure, the critical loading combination, some of the key players in this design process. And of course, we are looking into the verification process of this rigid support model using the refined analysis for both the reinforced concrete box girder and I girder bridges. So those are the ones. And so this rigid support model was essentially restraining the girders underneath the web from the vertical movement, but allow it to rotate freely with a pin support along the entire length of the bridge. We are also using an infinitely long span bridge, about five times the truck length itself to actually allow the development of the maximum bending moment effect. The HL93 load was our initial trial of this process within the 100 PSI tire pressure, which could actually go up to 125 in the next step. And also we are looking at placing the heaviest axle load in the middle span of this entire bridge longitudinally, but move the truck from in the transverse direction from the barrier to the center of the bridge using different increment because we actually had to identify the most critical location for the shear, for flexor, when the truck is actually in the moving uh, process. And the negative bending moment in the positive and negative sense, the shear stress are all obtained from this model. And also we had to refine the model for the verification process as well. So the two prototypes we used, one is the previous prototype bridge I talked about with the small box girder about 170 feet long. The second uh, prototype of bridge we used is this casting place pre-stress box girder. It's actually much bigger. You can tell with the size and then the width, it's actually about 
uh, 500, 750 feet long in total. And it's a total with about 70 feet right here. And it's also a four cell box girder in the same uh, configuration. So and for example, using the small box girder as an example, we actually uh, did, a, uh, did consider the geometries and also the patching loads of the, of the loading we're having the HL93 in the longitudinal and the transverse direction. And then the model itself uh, uh, was able to provide a lot better convergence and also the efficiency in the computational time. The part of the effort we had to spend quite a bit is the positioning of these truck loads, the HL93 axial truck loads in the transverse direction going from the barrier, a face of the barrier, all the way to the middle span of this uh, width of the bridge. So it actually had uh, uh, more than 20 cases that we had to uh, look into the, the, the most critical scenario. So for the small boxes, it had uh, it provided us the maximum, uh, the actually the critical location in one of these cases, L right here. For the large box footer, we were able to identify the location where it gives us the, the uh, um, critical uh, loading for the for the maximum shear and also the bending moment. So the span length in this case right here, we have uh, multiple scenarios in the common design process. The first two we had identified in the case A and the case B were based on our previous uh, study on the positioning of the truck. And it actually had the, the covers the two, two of the most scenarios that yields the most critical design case. So these are some of the scenarios. Then some of the results we are currently uh, processing and interpreting are part of the analysis from the maximum bending moment and then the maximum negative bending moment in the, in the results right here. This plot shows part of the distribution of this uh, moment along the width of the bridge when the truck is positioned at a certain location, which is actually a 75 half of the end span. And for the other shear uh, demand, or the shear capacity, uh, this one here, we actually also had to uh, extract some of the data from this critical location. So in the refined model, we had the two scenarios based on the small box and the large box, both, both actually using the refined three-dimensional analysis, using those as our verification of this rigid support model. So part of the results we had here, for example, in the small box girder, and the top left plot here shows the average moment envelope in, in the uh, transverse direction, which uh, the position from zero to 211 shows the distance between the end of the, uh, end of the uh, deck to the face of the tire, which is actually where the truck is located. So we looked at uh, different scenarios in this case for the different locations and the bars in this particular plot here, these ones here representing the refined model that we actually did the, the analysis previously. And the, the red and the purple line is based on the rigid support model we actually ran as an approximate method. As you can tell that the, uh, the rigid support model actually is able to envelope the performance in majority of the locations. But of course, some of the places it's actually overestimating it. And some of the locations, some of the support locations, it underestimates a little bit of the, of the uh, shear, especially right here. But overall, we actually were happy about this particular method because it does help us to narrow it down what we could focus on. For the large box girder, this trend is actually a little bit better than Two what more we minutes. Thank you. All right, so let me actually quickly do a summary on what we have right here. In the small box girder bridge that we actually used the rigid support model, it covers, it actually envelopes the maximum positive and negative moment in a, a very conservative way. As you can tell that they are between four to 18% of the coverage as a higher ca uh, capacity. The maximum shear is 3.7% higher than the refined model. The large box girder had also a relatively good coverage as the envelope itself. The maximum positive moment has a slightly smaller as 0.7% of the, of the coverage, but we actually uh, were happy about this small percent of the difference as, a, as what the approximation that we usually get from the final element analysis itself. So the set steps we're taking currently are using the rigid support model we verified so far to conduct the parametric study to come up with the capacity demand database where we can actually use that to generate a lot of the information we're looking into the design. And at the same time, we needed the, 
to do a quick a quali qualitative or quantitative assessment of the existing approximate method that ASHTAR Appendix, uh, Appendix A4 is actually using uh, in the design. And then the last two steps as the forward process is to look into the design procedure with a simplifying method and also the recommendations on the details of what we have to do in the design, design itself. So I will stop right here and uh, I'll come back with the questions. I think we uh, have sessions later on. So I will be here for your questions. Thank you, Jaren. Thank you.